the rebound for the first two games this year. Trent will never get a more than I hope to be like it short. What an amazing block by Kyle Edwards. And Trayvon Duvall was running right up his back. That was big time athleticism to make that play. We stay in the two free zones. And you can stay for the game up the middle. One guy that can operate those transmits to make plays like there he goes. Jackson, and a foul, and a chance for three. Right now, Michigan State is doing what it does best. Foul play and offensive rebound. Well, when Tom Izzo first got this job, rebounding became his focus because he felt like if he couldn't score, they were going to have to go get second shots. And they have really carried that through over the last 20 years. Every year, Michigan State is at or near the top of the country. So Jackson to the line, outstanding freshman. As Chris is sitting at home, just to get a couple of three, there to be under 16, media timeout. It is Jaron Jackson Jr. sent in there with his dad. He's a very good player at Georgetown. He's played at the NBA championship. He was on the podium. Jaron Jackson Jr. is already a really good player. He's just a great one. His length is off the charts. He's going to have to work on his shooting a little bit. I may have noticed there's no rotation on that shot right now at all. The ball fouled on the drive. And we'll step aside with four minutes in. When we come back, will you? The best game that Tom Mitchell had this past offseason. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Dollar General, the official discount retailer of the Big 12. And Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. In the State Farm Champions Classic, and Michigan State up 8 4 of the reasons why Miles Bridges is back. Shocked everybody by deciding to come back for his sophomore season. A great day to Thomas in the program. I want to thank God for this opportunity I got um, to either reach my dreams in the NBA or stay here with my teammates. But um, I got some more things to do this year. And I, I'm just saying, I, I, I want to say, I want to win a national championship. Three more years! Three more years! Three more years! Three more years! Now that might be a little bit over the optimist for Tommy Zoe, but he'll take one more year. The sophomore season to get a National Player of the Year candidate. This is brought to you by The Last Jedi, the Star Wars movie coming out over the holidays. Miles Bridges, he may not actually improve his draft stuff, but that wasn't what it was about for Miles Bridges coming back, right? No, he enjoys being in college. At least, at least that's what he said. He's got some great teammates, and he is a great teammate himself. And look, he's a great kid, whether he went pro or not. So if he had gone pro, he's the same great kid. Selfishly, and I'm glad he's back, because I get to watch him, absolutely. And he's, he's compelling to watch. His goals, he says, to win a national championship, become a better player, and be you know, in, a, in a better position to move on to the NBA, to head to the next stage in life by getting one more year under his belt. What would he be able to see and give his answer? If the Sparks can have a kind of year, they are hopeful of this year. That's what I like to the only Michigan State star there. There's the guy that needs to knock the top down to play with the air. Grant, the shooting ball was well last year, the sophomore season as he did as a freshman, and he was with some injuries last year as well. And now he's called for a touchdown out beyond the arc, and that'll be three free throws. Just caught him on the arm after the shot was released. And he did touch him. Jason Allen has started the year very hot. He blew that was one of the first two games of their season to be the Elon by 31 to be the Utah Valley by 30 and in those games, Joe. Allen has looked very good, made 10 of his 15 threes. What are you expecting from him this season? Well, he's got to be a great leader. And he looks, he looked fantastic his first two games. He's healthy, uh, and he looks so fresh. He took about three months off over the summer and got away from basketball. And uh, his coaching staff said they wanted him to fall in love with the game again. Obviously, last year was difficult to hear about him off the floor for great talent, but he looked completely refreshed this year. And the first thing he said was, not to be a great player, he's out there, he's going to start a lot of the four freshmen. Ray Dunn moving and chilling with the finish on the assist from Kenny Goins. And he moved the ball from side to side, Brent Jenkins to the middle. And Kenny Goins was behind the zone, and took the line. That was beautifully executed by Mr. Fitz. Back in the middle of the size of this match on Goins, who's used to playing against bigger people. Bagley left-handed, but he turned it over on the ground. And Michigan State got the ball into the middle. Oftentimes what that does is make the defense contract. 
And it goes right behind, you got Marcus Marquise Bolden coming up to get the ball. And that left the baseline wide open for the easy dunk and a great pass by Gavin Sharp. Duke staying in the 2-3 zone, Michigan State up 2, just over 5 minutes in. At the time, you'll see Captain Winston sneak into the middle. He can be a great playmaker in the middle of this zone. Jackson in the middle right now, here comes Bridges. Right now, Michigan State is throwing around the dribble. That's where they need to get it. Jackson will turn around, and they're going on its own, and Schilling slam it down. Well, Duke been saying that he was in the show. Yeah, that looked like basket in the pair of the right team. Basket cast the lead up to four. All the points to that Michigan State in the paint. Out of no. Badly rejected by Jackson. Winston close to post. And then Michigan State can reset what Michigan State is doing. So protecting the rim during the rebound. But Jerry Jackson's a big time player. Turns it over here and a chance for Duke to run. Oh, Duke oh. Miles. What a sweet feed from Duval. Grayson Allen looking to the heavens. But happy with himself that he didn't finish. Michigan State is a great rebounding team. Gavin Killing doesn't get blocked out here. But that ball is in the cylinder. There's no question about it. So a break for the Spartans is the bucket pass. Mike Krzyzewski had a lot of really good things to say for, during the shoot-around today about the guy at the free throw line right now. Wendell Carter Jr., 6'10 freshman from Atlanta. I referred to him as a kid as I was asking the question to Coach Taylor. He said, no, he's not a kid. He said he's a great basketball player. He happens to be there. What does Coach Taylor really like about players? Well, first, do you think Coach Taylor's going to let a Canadian have a last word on basketball? So he's going to put it in the middle. Does Coach Taylor have a team? Wendell Carter has been better than advertising. He was advertising the top 10 player. A really smart basketball player with a great basketball IQ. Another guy that plays above the rim, a big time rebounder. Uh, he, he can be a great coach. Ball pressure here by the Blue Devils. And we're still going to get it open. Must have still going. And finally, draws it back. Here's a control for a pressure with one, two, two, three, four, 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 what is this game like? A step up to this level of intensity and opposition. Well, it, it's a big difference. Obviously, playing the Hulls against Utah Valley and Elon is a game where the lights could be brighter in a one versus two game. And they get the team is older. And they are physically, I mean, Michigan State is a little bit more physical at this stage of their career. Carter turns it over. And right now, Michigan State feels like they have the upper hand in this game and has played much better, yet they're only up the bucket. This is the seventh year of the State Farm Champions Classic. And of the four schools, Kentucky's got the best record in four and two. Kansas City is four. Both of them are right now. Those two can make the State 3-3-5 into this one. And we're going to make the free break. Great step play run by Tom Izzo there. We don't know how to look on the east side. We've got Jackson coming right in the middle. That left Nick Ward wide open in the basket. And the bottom line of that turn came down all three guys. Guy last year, about 19 minutes per game. That's a condition issue, just looking at the standard to play longer stretches. Also, has a foul player looking for more minutes out of him this year. Double header from the NBA on the ESPN of Orlando. Getting to the right of the pass, taking on the Hornets at 8 o'clock Eastern time on the second game. They've got the interesting. They're about to be 76 for the Hornets last year. This is Hubbard's tips with NBA countdown charged by Mount View. That's so much more interesting. And you mentioned that Florida. I don't know that Michigan State has to play him more minutes this year, but every game last year started out with Tom Mitchell and his dog coming in for a minute. Don't foul him. And now we've got the depth here. Schilling back with Jackson, with Max Carter, the sixth year senior back from an injury. And Gary Trent Jr. Now he's got to be starting to say the name sounds to me. His dad was a shack of the mouth. He was at Ohio University back in the day, and we're going to have an NBA career. The son of the jack and a half of the pickup, and now Michigan State turning the ball over. Where Bill Wire is forcing the turnover. Just wants to be playing the ball. Jackie would get another offensive rebound, and he converts. Robert Hill, much more. Always looking to get back to that left hand. Mark Beckley, the third left hand, but as we stick forward, that was a great play. And a block at the rim. Both Beckley and Jack of the Lord, he was there. Well, it's a big time athlete in this game. Good line at the point right now for the ball. You can slow down. Allen creates a little space, soft touch. Really good body control by Grayson Allen. Coming off the ball screen, getting downhill into the lane. It's made a lot of times last year, maybe the first three years of his career. Grayson Allen would drive into the lane, wind up on his back. 
And that's not happening much this year. Again, good ball movement, and again, a rejection by the Blue Bills. Players of the top and coming freshmen of the college basketball game this year. Better get the door quick. Four hundred horsepower, towing capacity of nine thousand pounds. It's got a best in class thirty-four foot units of beast. Hey, with TireRack.com, at least you know you were smart about your tires. Oops. Visit TireRack.com for the full line of continental winter contact tires, engineered for total confidence in rain, snow, and wind. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Smarter. What is love? Love is what inspires me. Love is being awakened by a kiss. Love is finding calm in your partner's arms. Love is intimate. Love is everlasting. Love is a diamond. If there's one thing I know, it's couples in love. From the runway to the wedding hall to the most romantic day of their lives, I'm there. Each piece of my jewelry collection is designed with lovers in mind. The Beer Wine Love Collection at Sales, the Diamond Store. What do you want this holiday to smell like? Balsam fir? Fresh cinnamon? Or for something really special, you car smell. Don't mind if I do. Ring in the holidays with Buick. Hurry into your Buick dealer and get 17% below MSRP on almost every 2017 sedan model. That's nearly 7,400 on this lacrosse. Hurry, offer ends November 14th. Who am I? I'm the freshman four for the Duke Blue Devils. Three things you didn't know about me. I played in the G League alongside James Harden and CP3. My dad was born right here in Durham and played for North Carolina a and My first scholarship offer was in the seventh grade. Who am I? I am Marvin Bagley III. And a young man who will be classified from next year into this year, he will be the top ranked recruit of this incoming freshman class for more on Marvin Beckley with her. Here's Marvin Taylor. Well, you know, Dan Marvin says he's a self proclaimed gym rat. He'll get to practice two hours early just to work on his ball handling. He really wants to work on finishing around the basket, being strong, and being in better shape. So he'll get in there and do extra conditioning. And Grayson Allen says it's so easy to play with him because his basketball IQ is high. He catches everything, and he's really good around the rim. Jim, what's the best part of his game to well, his rebounding. He's already got five offensive rebounds. He's always around the ball. He's an extraordinarily hard worker. And he changes ends with incredible speed. I think he's just scratching the surface of how good he can be as an offensive player. Uh, he needs to work on his right hand. He's, he's a dominant left-hand player. But he's unique. He's going to not see guys like Marvin Bagley III very often. Ben Carter, he had to try and defend him. Carter, as we mentioned, a six-year season. So the season going to be injury to get the last year. He's granted a six-year ability to go to the He has previously transferred to these places. Goldwire for three. Good Goldwire, six to freshman at North Cross, Georgia, and Duke is on an 11-0 run right now. The Blue Devils have been able to turn over Michigan State. They've challenged Nick Ward several times at the rim and have turned some defense into offense. That's a really good pass by Gary Trent to George Goldwire, who was ready to shoot when he caught it. He's sticking with his 2-3 zone. Oh, he paid my best. Richards gets inside, switches hands, can't finish it down the rebound for Gloria, who looks like a much improved player this year. He could have a much larger role for the Blue Devils this year. Now, wait for the ball. Trent is called for the foul. Gary Trent Jr. just picked up that foul, but when he drove here and was able to draw Captain Winston to try to stop that penetration, that left goal wire wide open at the top of the key. And his shot preparation, he was ready to shoot when the ball arrived. Pretty good for a freshman. That was the second foul on Trent, and he's standing in three stages of Winston, trying to get possession. Langford with a fadeaway, won't stay out. And walks to the Spartans, and Bradley might have taken a an elbow or some sort of a shot to the face as you can see he is down at a considerable discomfort right now. And he's back again. Carter battling for the rebound it looked like. Well actually his own teammate got there's Deloria with the right hand. Looked like he got a finger. Looked like it was his left eye there. Or was it the right eye? Right eye, yep. And Bagley is still down, and the other players in the court will head to their respective benches while Bagley gets a little bit of medical attention, obviously, with a lot of discomfort. Uh, 
Robin Bagley, the third, 6'11", 234, freshman out of Phoenix. And uh, a guy many believe has a chance to be the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. And, uh, he is a, a one and one. He certainly has that kind of talent, that kind of ability. Second game tonight, number seven, Kentucky, the Wildcats, with the youngest team that John Calipari's ever had. So think about that for a second. With all the freshman late teams that he's had, they'll take on a team with a lot more experience in fourth rank. Kansas Jayhawks will be the college football playoffs top 25 show with Reese and the guys coming up between the game. So Reese is doing some double duty. He's got his basketball buddies at halftime. He's got his football buddies between the game. And he's got he's got a well quaffed look as always. He's always shot. Badly up and will slowly make his way off the court. Inadvertent poked finger in the eye from his teammate, Calvin DeLore, and badly to the bench. Serious and running for Harper. They're not keeping out for too long. Harper was back at the game for that. The Kansas is going to be left uh, off the court and take back to the locker room. As you can say against this zone, uh, has to get better penetration. They have to get into the lane, whether by the dribble or the pass. They've been spending too much time passing around the zone instead of in the middle of it. A turnover, numbers for you. Dubai will finish. That kind of turnover drives Tom Gizzo crazy. He calls that a turnover for a touchdown. One pass, a Michigan State pass, and Duke's taking it the other way. And it's now a 13 to nothing run for the New Yorks. And it's a really good play by Duke, but also Michigan State shooting itself in the foot. Bridges called for the offensive foul. Very well, good job by Grace Allen, moving his feet to maintain that guarding position. But Jack DeLorean, who's playing on the baseline, playing up top, and with that weight, knocking it away, and Draymond Duval, the freshman, is strong and athletic. First two games, Draymond Duval, 20 assists, only one turnover. 6'3 freshman out of Newcastle, Delaware. But an outstanding freshman class for the Eagles at four of Started for years, Duval no, tip no, and over the back, he got a call going against DeLorean. Tommy's O'Tara and Bridges. Bridges also getting some words from Tom Tom Nair, who's in a backup role now behind Winston. Those are the two co-captains for the start. Bridges, the sophomore, and Nair, the senior. Tom Tom Nair, one of the best leaders in the country, uh, has essentially moved aside a bit so that Captain Winston can take over at the point. But right now, Michigan State's got to be more in attack mode. Party gets some traffic off balance, gets it to go, and Michigan State with his first points in about five and a half minutes. That was a long run. The big knee brace on the left knee of that play that twice surgically repaired left knee. And then maybe just figured that it's a ton of players out there, a very smart, fundamentally sound player off the bench of the start. <laughs> ben Carter getting the ball inside and sticking with it, pivoting around and able to get that over Wendell Carter. And on the other, Wendell Carter is doing a nice job of being really active and making Ben Carter guard him and drawing a lot of that attention. Duke Stouts on to a bigger line here. They've got Bolden in there, up front, along with Carter and DeLorean. Allen freed up for a three. That was a big time move by Grayson Allen. The defender went over the top. He bumped back toward the corner and wide open for the shot. That was a great read of the defense by Grayson Allen. All the American caliber players, a sophomore, obviously two things to the set back this last year in his junior season. And the suspension had some injuries. But Allen, and it's very early, it's just the third game of the week. That was off to a great start this year. And as Travel is called, on to ball, who didn't understand that call. And that looked like he got fouled, but Grayson Allen, watch out, he cuts off this screen set by Marquise Bolden, and Joshua Langford goes over the top of the screen, he just bumps back or fades back just a little bit to the corner, and he is always ready to shoot when he catches it. He gets it right in that shooting pocket and goes straight up. He's got a great shooting stroke, and he continues to stay in that zone. Why would he? He's just going to start a lot of problems. So especially for Fitch McFay, on this half season, not shot ball well at all. We're going to look here, like this is the three, and we have a foul going against the Blue Devils. It'll be on DeLorean. The Chambers will be in the Michigan State early. Duke sits. Ten who are going to get the number one ranked recruit in the country. So this year, it's back to He's still back in the locker room having his eye looked at it next year. It'll be a young man by the name of R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett, a Canadian, and a, a, an absolutely great prospect. And I would submit that, that Duke and, and Kentucky and Kansas they get all their players from the exact same area. The top of every recruiting list is 
Roger Barrett from Mississauga, Ontario, who's rested from out of his bed. He's off to the ball. Ball Barrett can really shoot. He stays in the zone. Nice kick by Carter. But look at the size out there with Wendell, with Wendell Carter guarding Langford out on the wing. That's a 6'9 guy out of the corner to close the pass. Now that ball hit Teddy Valentine, one of the officials, but he was standing out of bounds. Anytime the ball touches anything out of bounds, it is deemed out of bounds. So Michigan State keeps it. Langford for three. Michigan State has to make a shot outside the paint. They might, they have a, might have made, what, one shot outside the main area? Well, that's not going to get it done against most anybody good. The Lakers will go to the bench, McQuaid back in, so it's McQuaid, Bridges, Winston trying to keep his teammates' spirits up here. Jackson and Carter the game for the Sparks, who had an early lead, but are now down double figures. So double stack wall. Two ball. Duke has two great shooters, Allen and Trent. Will there be another guy who can make consistent threes for a program that we've come to associate who can make a lot of threes? So Duke is not going to be the same kind of perimeter shooter, a uh, shooting team that they have been in years past. They've been guard dominated and perimeter dominated in years past, where you have four guys on the floor that can make three, four, five threes in a game each. They don't have that this year. The guys they have that can shoot, as you mentioned, Billy Trent Jr. and Grayson Allen, both those guys can make five or more in a game. But they need to get the ball inside to the inside out. Their strength is in the paint on the glass and running floor. Jackson from the baseline. And maybe not the most likely guy to break the drought. And not one down. And the Sparks will take it. Oh, that's amazing. The wild out Rolden comes down with a Michigan State bench furious. There was no over the back ball. And the end result, a play later, is a foul on the Spartans. Well, he went over him. I don't necessarily know that he was on his back. That just looked like good hard rebounding from this angle. He went over it. I don't think he was on his back there. No, that was a part of his second. But one thing Jackson did not do, and that will show that will be shown in the Tom Clark on film, he didn't turn and block out. Now Michigan State calls that cutting out, that's the term that Tom Izzo uses. And he wants his guys to turn and crack the guy behind him. And really what Jared Jackson Jr. did, because it's always worked for him, is he just turned to go after the ball. There. And he's big enough and he's going to match up everybody in the high school for a different game here. Golden misses a bite. So at this level, he can only out jump almost everybody. <laughs> right. As you said, there are some athletes in this game. Well, he's got the ball right now with the bridges. He'll take a three. And they're back with it four. Doesn't the world look different when the ball goes through the net? All of a sudden, they're slapping the floor on defense. The Spartans fans are on their feet. Allen the drive and a kick. Duval. Another offensive rebound for Duke. The goal interjected. Still working hard. But here comes the Spartans. Jackson feeling it. Hitting it. A 9 0 win for the Spartans with Jaron Jackson Jr. hitting a couple of threes. He's by Michigan State. And all of a sudden, the Spartans have a different vibe than they had two minutes ago. Trent with a pull up. Rough guy. And the Spartans have a chance to take the lead. Middle wide open. Jackson with a board along the baseline behind his own. Down the chain. Just throwing around the trick, and that's where he's got to get. It'll be McQuaid, going to get a shot off the kick inside, and a reverse for Ward! Last 10 seconds of the shot clock, a very effective attack of the goal. And all of a sudden, the level of run is good mission and shape back on top. Target cross for it. Another miss from the end of the The ball should have taken that shot right away. He was wide open, but he got that relocation pass from Wendell Carter. And Jackson taken down. Pretty good job there by Jaron Jackson Jr. going after the ball. His pursuit of it led to that foul. Now here's one of the rule changes in basketball that we're going into the bonus. So 
and it was in fact here. And the foul instead of a shot clock, he'll reset up the three. He's going to go up to 20 this year with a defensive foul. Just an effort again to get more possessions. Why give him 30 if they've already got the ball? Exactly. And, and, and FIBA rules have done that for a long time. And also FIBA rules, when you get an offensive rebound, they have a 24 second to a clock. You only get a reset to 14. Right. And that's one thing the college basketball so should look at. Offensive rebound, a reset to 20, and that's it. Because as you say, you don't have to bring the ball up in the backboard. And again, it's bonus here, so it doesn't apply here. But just pointing out one of the rule changes going into this season. Jackson is at the right. Misses the front end. We still have not seen the return of Beckler. Joshua Langston has done a very good job guarding Grayson Allen. Well, the Lord, he was wide open to get it now and puts it home. Nick Ward just fell asleep defensively and was taken advantage of. Pass knocked away. That's got to happen after a reversal. Wait, how about Jared Jackson Jr. knocking that ball away? The long arms of Jackson. Number one, number two, and a one-point game. This is not just a night of basketball, it's also a night for college football. The college football playoff top 25 rankings will be released between the games tonight live here on ESPN. A reach of the guys will bring to you one of the guys. Herbie, stand by with Herbie. That's right, if the rankings are being released, that can only mean one thing. Herbie's at a basketball game <laughs> in the middle of football season. Okay, with number one going down last week, I mean, what's the shakeup that we're going to see? I mean, I, they're probably going to have Alabama at one, I would think. I, I personally have Oklahoma up there because of Baker Mayfield. I can't wait to see what happens to teams like Notre Dame. Georgia, after disappointing losses, how far down do they go? I think there's going to still be up to eight or nine teams that still are alive with just three weeks of football to go. All right, we've got plenty more coming with Herbie, Joey Galloway, Porter McFarland here. They'll all be with Reese, and we're going to take a look at those rankings with you guys. Good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime Reese is in control, we're in good shape. Just ask Jay, he knows that. You sure about that? Okay. We'll go with you on that one, Herbie. Enjoy the rest of the game. <laughs> I, I'm going to know if it's harder for Reese to control his basketball group or his football group. Oh, football, because there are so many more brilliant minds on the basketball side. <laughs> Pressure company. <laughs> Excluded. Excluded. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to know, where is UCF in that? If every game counts, they've won every game. Wisconsin and UCF should be up there. And Jay will reveal his picks in the second half. He's championing the cause of the other piece. Anyway, Allen Short. There's these offensive rebounds that Michigan State is giving up to do are killing the Spartans. I mean, Duke's only shooting 28-27% from the field, but their second chance opportunities like crazy. It's 14 offensive rebounds right now for Duke, and not just the big guys. The guards are getting in there getting rebounds. And if there's one thing that gets under the skin of Tom Izzo, it's not rebounding well. It may or be demolished on the glass right now. Good wire at the line. So he's out there with Duval right now and Allen in the backcourt. Trent is going to the bench. Duke is deeper up front than they are in the backcourt. You mentioned this is a very different kind of looking Duke team. The way it, it, it's put together a lot more bigs and maybe not as many shooters. Tom Tom there! Nice screen by Kenny Goins taking Jack and Deloria totally out of the play. And then opening up the bucket from there. But the whole thing is still got pretty good rules. He does. He's seen it down the court for her. Duval might have been deflected. We've got a call. And now Goins and Duval both scrapping down on the court. Now that call was late, but it was a good call. And that was contact up top by Nair. But it was just a late call. There's nothing wrong with a late call as long as it's the right call. And from my seat, that was the right call. Yeah, we got one all over his arm. And Teddy Valentine comes in from the back, back end and makes the call, but he was right. So we go back to the free throw line. The Blue Devils, and again, small sample size of work in their first two games of the season against Elon and Utah Valley, shot 46% as a team for the free throw. And they're 7 for 12 tonight, and now DeLorean is called for the foul. Michigan State, their workout today, work on free throw blockouts. Now, they do that all the time. That, that's, a, that's a big thing. Game day, they work on free throw blockouts. But because of what you just mentioned, that Duke has not been shooting free throws very well on this season, free throw blockouts become even more magnified in this type of game. Number three on the Laurier, he goes to the bench. Our first look tonight at Antonio Rankovich, a 7 foot junior from Croatia, and again, it bears repeating. We still have not seen the bottom back the third. Never mind, uh, get back to the game. We haven't even seen him come back to the bench uh, after getting poked in the eye by his teammate in a group a little bit earlier. Coming out of the half, it's the Alpha Romeo halftime report. We say this. Set big. There's Jay Rowe. Uh, we'll talk about a bunch of other things here. Two UCLA freshmen are on their way back. Back in the U.S. But now, what may lie ahead for them? We're going to be the college football actors. And of course, they're looking ahead to the second game tonight between Kentucky and Kansas. Uh, it's fantastic. And this is the way to tip off a great college basketball season. And Langford staying in front of three for now. Trent doesn't get the bounce. And a foul underneath going against Ward trying to hold on Rankovich. 
so many big guys that Duke can bring into the game, and even with Marvin Bagley the third after getting poked in the eye by Javon Delorier, it's been at least, what, eight minutes game time that he has not been available yet. But that doesn't mean that Duke doesn't have other big guys to put in. There are a lot of big bodies that they are going hard for the offensive glass, and Michigan State has not been able to keep Duke off the glass. Brankovic spent his summer playing for the Croatian national team, as we've got a new cover of the game now for Michigan State. Our first look at Xavier Tillman, 6'8", 260, out of Grand Rapids in Andy Rupert. They don't make freshmen like they used to. Tillman sure doesn't look like freshmen. Looks like Al Alex Gondo. <laughs> and the 23 and 1. The third coach is going deep into their benches. Two point guard look, tucked on the air, passes Winston to both of the game for the spot. That's wild. Wow. Well, Tillman is wide open on the line. Langford. Winston for three. And it will be. I think it was a foul, I think it was just over the back, yeah, up over the uh, occupation of the shot clock, so it's too low. On that ball reversal, when Tuck Down there was coming off that little double screen on the opposite side, you get a guy coming in from the middle of the lane, and one going to the bucket. And the guy going to the bucket is usually open, and that was Xavier Turner. He was wide open, and he was just missed. Both of these teams learning a lot about themselves. Another block. Man, the Bridges get out there. Miles Bridges blocks jump shots. He is so quick and explosive off the floor. Well, that's a big time block. How many guys in basketball, let alone college basketball, can make that play? The Spartans, Jay, have eight block shots in the first half of this game. Now the Bridges stays down to shot game. This is great. Switch back. Left hand, Allen, a little bit short. Mayer, push ahead, Langford. Gets it to go. But Grayson Allen went right into the chest of the defender, and Allen was the one that got knocked back. And this is quite a comeback for Michigan State. They were dead in the water earlier in this half. Frank in a good position inside, a sweet feed from Duval. Number one and number two in a one-point game here in Chicago with Kansas and Kentucky. Still kind of shed a game here. Miles Bridges needs to be aggressive offensively. He needs to get a shot. He's just been too quiet. He's too big of a player to do this play. Still has the elbow. Touch pass near. Langford three! Basket looks a lot bigger for the Spartans than it did earlier in the half. They couldn't buy one from the perimeter. Allen elevates and draws another foul outside of the yard. And for the second time tonight, he'll head to the free throw line for three. Just a smart play. Now Allen may have sold that, but he got hit. And you can't, if you're putting pressure on a perimeter shooter, you cannot tell. He hit him right on the right on the arm. Now Allen sold it. He didn't need to go down, but so what? That is right on the arm. There's no question about it, absolutely. And on top of their season, later tonight or tomorrow morning, see that. So Allen is a very good free throw shooter. Shooter heads to the line for three. And now the officials have gone to the bottom. They might be looking at two or three. Yeah. And apparently they're looking not at the foul, but at the last Michigan State basket by Langford, who's hitting two or three, and it looks like a three, which is what was really initial. I don't know, it looked like his toe might be on the line there. Look at that, but I didn't see a gap, but I thought it was a three when he let it go. No, nope, there's a gap there. So that should stay. You're right, that is a three. That's a great angle there. You can't tell anything there. The two side angles, it's the one from the top where you can see a little bit of a gap between the shoe and the line. So the three will stand for Langford and at the other end, now Grayson Allen to the line for three. Three years ago, he won a national championship. It was Quinn Cook, a senior, and so many great freshmen, both of them, Winslow, Jones, and then later the season and into the NCAA tournament, Allen really burst onto the scene as a freshman. Now he's the senior with all the freshmen here in the 2017 18 season. I believe one of the things that's going to lead to a, a great year for Grayson Allen is when he's a senior, we mentioned that he's refreshed from all that happened last year and has turned the page, but also he's got a true point guard to play with now. Trade on Duval comes in here to take over the ball and responsibilities. That lets Grayson Allen become a scorer that can hunt his shot. He's not worrying about just setting up everyone else. That's Duval's job. And that takes a lot off the plate of Grayson Allen. Allen so Connell into the game for the first time to do 6 6 freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, where number 15. In the final minute, and the first half of this scene, each team is going to a drought and then go on a run. Somebody's got to get into that middle. This has been an active zone. Steal by Duval, and he's off to the races. Well, Tom Izzo has got to be living right now. 
But Duke has had difficulty scoring against Michigan State in the half court. And there have been a number of turnovers that have led to one outs. And he calls it turnovers for touchdowns. You can't guard a runner. And you can see him pleading with his players in the Michigan State huddle. But it has been impressive to watch Duke with their length and their activity in this zone. This has not been a passive zone defense with a bunch of pressure. It has been more of an attacking zone defense. Exactly the third went out right around the midway point of the first half after getting close to the eye, and Michigan State has played a lot better. They've gone on a bit of a run to out of the game. So once that went out, then it was Jaron Jackson Jr. that took the lid off the basket. He hit a three, Miles Bridges hit a three, and then Jackson with another. Jaron Jackson Jr. in his first game against North Florida had 13 points, 13 rebounds, four blocks, three assists, and two steals. Pretty good debut, and he has carried it forward in what will be one of the biggest games that Michigan State played all year long. The Spartans can hold for the final shot of the first half. Tom Izzo usually break after a timeout and draw something up. There, got a wide open man, it's Rackford. And Duke's got time. Good for the rest. Down to two seconds, deep one for Allen. Allen caps off a 14-point first half. We're pretty close to a 30-footer to get Duke a four-point lead. Michigan State had momentum and did not handle the end of the half. Why the Grayson Allen in a big first half? Duke with a four-point lead going to the second half. This is an ESPN Sonic block post. Heading to the second half. Number one, Duke 38. Number two, Michigan State 34. One of the big stories of the first half of the injury to each outstanding freshman to be had of Arvin back in the third. Inadvertently poked in the eye by his teammate, Javon Delorier. He was taken to the locker room, got some medical attention. He is back on the bench, but that's it right now. Maria Taylor has the latest. And I'm told, Dan, by assistant coach John Shire that Marvin Gutfagley will not be returning to the game. They're just calling it an eye injury, and after athletic training staff looked at him, who's the better part of that first half, decided that he would not be able to return. So, Shire says that they're going to have to rely on guys like Bolden to really pick it up and do a better job, he believes, in transition defense. They feel like they're giving up too many easy buckets right now to Michigan State. So he's back at the bench, but will not play. Hopefully it's not a serious injury, and maybe it just costs him tonight. And show to Jay Billis, which is taking the first half. Michigan State held Duke to 30% from the field, and that includes some turnovers that run out layups. Michigan State's given up a ton of offensive rebounds, and Miles Bridges played 17 minutes in the first half, three shot attempts. That is not enough for a national player of the year candidate. Against this 2-3 zone, Bridges has got to be more aggressive offensively. Ready for the tip of the second half here in our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. This 2 3 zone, which Duke has played from the opening tip, has been really effective. Bridges with a very nice find to Ward. And one of the things the zone has done, it has kept Michigan State off the foul line. Now, Duke, even though they're shooting 30%, they have 18 free throw attempts in that first half, only six for Michigan State. Great position for Carter inside, and he'll finish. Left strength on strength, went right into the chest of Nick Ward. And 6'10, 259, and 6'8, 245. Bridges knocks down his second three of the night. That's really the next step for Miles Bridges, is to be more aggressive. And Tom Izzo shouldn't have to wear it out at halftime to take more shots. Jackson got a piece of that. If they give him a block, that would be the ninth block in the game for Michigan State. And the early substitution here in the second half, Gavin Schilling will take the place of the award. I can't remember a big guy at Michigan State that had the physical profile of Jaron Jackson Jr. to have that kind of length and, and that athleticism as well. Allen wide open. He's got 16. Grayson Allen looks great. He looks absolutely great. You expect, if, if there are no issues of any kind for him, that he'll have the kind of year this is, as a sophomore, when he was one of the very best players in the country. I absolutely think he will. Uh, last year, he only averaged 14 points a game, didn't shoot well, but he was injured, and he, he had to play the point, and had the ball in his hand for often, all that responsibility. How about Jackson? That's his third three of the game. This kid has got a ceiling that is ridiculous. How good is he? He doesn't look that pretty coming out, but he's trying to the bottom of the net. And get a foul against the Sparks. And right now, with Marvin Bagley the third out of the game and not returning, Wendell Carter is starting to assert himself inside. But wide open was Jaron Jackson Jr. I did not expect him to knock down three threes in this game. But we learned to expect the unexpected from these super talented freshmen. Bagley on the bench will not return. The right eye injury. Carter at the line for Duke. 
Meanwhile, game two is coming up. Dickie B will join me here at the table for Kansas and Kentucky, the Hall of Famer. They'll sit up one of the Hall of Fame back in September. That means that all four coaches in the State Farm Champions Classic are now officially Hall of Famers. They're amazing. This caliber of coach, this caliber of team. And he didn't turn around and shoot that. That's a wide open. Winston misses the three and a loose ball down to Duval. Allen's open again. Just a great shooter. Catches it, sets his feet, never took his eyes off the rim. Misses will pull up from 18 feet away, around and out. And Delorier giving Duke some good minutes. He's a very proficient rebounder. The target's got that ball. He was wide open on the knees. Established that early post. And, but Grayson Allen has a, a magnificent stroke. Just an outstanding shooter and a great pass ahead here by Trayvon Duvall. Right over Cassius Winston. And this young man sets his feet, squares up to the basket. That's just a beautiful stroke and nothing rushed about it. And James now attempted 18 threes this season. He's converted on 13. Well, that means to me. Big boy threes. <laughs> Stepping out of bounds is great. Well, you always said, even at his, at his very peak as a sophomore, you know, he would put his shoulder down, he would drive, he would get into the paint, he would draw fouls, and you always said he's great at that, but what he might be best at is a shooter. I think he's a better shooter, and, and that's where his future is. I mean, he's a courageous driver and likes to get it to the rim, but he's not, he's not a great finisher in traffic. He's been much better this year, but that's not his strength. Shooting is his strength, and he has proven that by this early season. Duke has been in the zone the entire night. Winston gets inside, kicks it back out, Bridges for three. And down with a strong rebound is Carter. With a two big body, Delorier and Carter going after that rebound. Looking for Vaughn. Tipped away, and we got a whistle. Hard to hear the whistle. It's going to happen by the blue whistle for the second time. We're going to take notice, and the foul is going to go in second. On Nick Ward. And that was going to be all for the line. Confusion. We're just trying to make sure that the foul was on him. This one is going to be on 34. That's showing he's not a man, but it is indeed on award number 44. So we're now going to get an NBA doubleheader coming your way here on ESPN. It'll be LeBron the Cavs taking on the Hornets at 8 o'clock Eastern. Then again, to the Watch the Ben Simmons James Noel. And the Sixers are going to shake the show to take on the Lakers. How good has Ben Simmons been? Even though it's two years out of school, it is worth a year. Warrior will get the guy. So you start to see more Simmons. You know, 17, 9, and 8, all put up in the same game. He's, he's ridiculous. He, he doesn't even shoot it yet, and I think he's going to shoot it much better. Big Ward always trying to get back to that left hand, the right shoulder. He's all passed up the shot for the layup. And he's leading it back to six. This is the first one versus two meters since Kansas and Oklahoma in triple overtime, January of 16. A reverse for Allen, and he's got 21. Michigan State has to do a better job of attacking this zone. That was a terrible pass by Miles Bridges. It led to another run out for Duke. Tom Mitchell will use the time back. Duke's lead is up to eight here early in the second half. And they're being led by their senior. 21 points in this game. Three of three from three point range. He's in all six of his free throws. And six of ten from the field in just 24 minutes of playing time. He's been as efficient as he can be. He's made all three of his threes, he's made all six of his free throws, and six for ten overall from the field. So how does Michigan State respond as they continue to try to find some shots dealing with this two-three zone? Have to get the ball into the middle, trying to screen the zone. Ben Carter, very good screener. But the ball is on one side of the floor too long. To make this zone shift, you have to move the ball. And right now it's just moving around on the perimeter without much penetration. And after throws the shot up, and stepping out of bounds is Jackson. We will turn it over and that'll take us to the media timeout. There's a one in the second half. Jayhawks in the house. Devontae Graham and the KU taking on Big Blue in game two. Realize your snowman is melting and he's not made of snow. 
Welcome at Lowe's. We have all the decorations you need to make your home magical for Christmas. All projects have a starting point. Start with Lowe's. Hurry into Lowe's and get a 12-foot inflatable flying ace for Snoopy for only $99. When I'm with you, the rest of the world fades away. So I got you something that stands out as beautifully as you do. Le'Veon at Jared. Only Jared has more exclusive Le'Veon pieces than any other jewelry store in the world. And now, visit Jared.com for $100 off any Le'Veon purchase. The one gift is unique as she is. That's why he went to Jared. What do you get the person that loves to tailgate? How about a new tailgate? Bring in the holidays with Buick. Discover the new Buick and 20% below MSRP on all 2017 Enclave leather models. That's over 9600 on this Enclave leather. Back in Chicago, number one Duke and number two Michigan State, a loss for the Duke basketball family as yesterday the father of associate head coach Jeff Cable passed away of ALS and Lou disease in Canada. Man, you were a very good coach in his day, especially at Old Dominion. Uh, Jeff Cable is not with the team today. I would be sure condolences to him the entire team. Our deepest sympathies to the entire Cable family. Jeff Cable Jr. was a, a giant in basketball. And not only an outstanding coach, but just a, a great man that mentored so many in the game. Coaches, players, and the like. And raised two outstanding sons. Jeff Cable the third and Jason Cable both were, have been head coaches. And, uh, our, our thoughts and prayers to the entire Cable family. Jeff Cable Jr. was a, just a wonderful, wonderful man. I remember the game last year with Jeff Cable Jr. They uh, fought in the second sack together under the bench yesterday with Jeff Cable the third during the game uh, during last season. So we're going to keep the sympathies to the Cable family as we check in with Marie. You remember, guys, Jeff Cable began his coaching career as an assistant to his father at Old Dominion back in 2000. When I reached out to Jason Cable and asked how he wanted his father to be remembered, he said, remember him as an Army veteran that coached at every level. His first high school coaching gig was in 1980 at Pinecrest High School and had to count this fly and was married to their mother, Jerry, for 45 years. The coaches are wearing an ALS pin as well as a red bracelet in support of Jeff who could not be here. Uh, thank you. And uh, not knowing it, or at least not publicly known, where the service will be, Probably uh, in the next few days. So the power is not here for Duke. I mean, quite good. He's the, uh, the family home. Eight point lead here for Duke as Carter checks out to Michigan State. But then, why we have been praising the play of Grayson Allen, and rightfully so, Allen has been outstanding. Right now, Duvall has been a big factor in Allen playing so well because of his, his fantastic ball handling responsibilities. How he's handled that. Allen again. Trayvon Duvall has got seven assists in this game, only two turnovers. And he had 20 assists in his first two games with just one turnover. And for a, an 18-year-old freshman to walk onto this stage and play with that kind of efficiency is incredibly impressive. And the Duke, uh, as I use off, is showing us that the 27 assists to Duvall in his first three games, no Duke freshman has ever had that many assists in his first three games. There. Bounce pass for good patience and gets it to go. You can see it doesn't take long to watch Nick Ward to see. As much as he had a lot of moments last year as a freshman, he's come back as better players as well. He's a big time ball. And what a great shot by Allen. But right under the chest of McQuaid, bumped it back a little bit, but still was able to keep his balance and go straight up. Boy, he was calling for the ball. Looked like he had a golden pin, didn't get a beat. Going back, and he has to play a lot tonight. I had to play the five spot a lot last year because Michigan State was still on the side. Bridges knocks down another three. We've been looking for a shot in the second half, did not look for it at all in the first half. Only three shot attempts in 17 minutes. Blue Brothers keep it alive in the last game with Warren Carousel. Now they're looking to run. Tom's up near with a push. Now he some help. They'll take up the dribble. Warren has slapped away. It will stay to the Michigan State. Bringing that ball down, you got to go straight up, he might have gotten hit on arm. 18 to shoot, as they inbounded to Winston in the backcourt. And Bridges has to be aggressive, and so too does Matt McQuaid. And Allen went for the steal, committed the foul, and he's going to go over and talk about Winston up. He'll get through the Cousins race to Allen, but it, it's definitely a foul, but it's nothing on the top of the Foul 
Well on Allen and 20 seconds again, one of the new rules. If the shot clock's under 20, the defense commits foul. They hope he set it to 30, but this goes back to 20. If you ball now, Paul, for a foul. Second on him, fifth on the team. Winston a floater, yes. There is some aggressive action with verbal penetration. And this one State usually does a very good job of screening against his own. I really need to continue to do that because the dribble can be a really a big weapon and be very debilitating for his own defense. And in the game of runs, it's Michigan State on the run right now as you two time. There's a little ball screen and you really have to step up and fake at the ball here. And that didn't happen by Gary Trent Jr. He just sort of melted on the screen and Trent's got to stop that penetration and then recover. Jay, you were talking about tonight that Trayvon Duval, the freshman, is having the time to check out our assist of the game, brought to you by State Farm. And Duval's got eight assists already in this game. So Trayvon Duval, he's 6'3 and very, very strong. He's got huge hands. The question coming into this season was his decision making. Could he leave from the point guard position, not turn the ball over? And he's steady, and he has been beyond steady. He's been spectacular. The number one ranked point guard in his class, the number six incoming recruit of the ESPN 100. He's out of the IMG Academy in Brady's report. Kept alive on the glass by Carter, but they knocked away back from the Spartans. When was the last time we saw Michigan State put up this many second shots? He's never kept yeah, I was going to say, never, never, never. We don't know what they'll be working on in practice. They're also the top take title. They're giving up really a good shot there. Winston on the Wide left, good ball. A play needed to shoot that. A great shot there. You've got to pick that thing up. Ball left hand. Carter working hard. Down to the Spartans. Only briefly though. Back to the Blue Devils. And now turn over again. And here comes Ward. How about that for a sequence? Not only hustle, Dan, but alertness. Michigan State comes up with the ball, and Tom Izzo wearing out Matt McClain about not shooting that ball after that last shot break. But after Michigan State came up with it, that's a great pass by McQuaid getting it to Winston and passing it ahead. Not a very good foul by Gary Trent. If you're going to foul here, you cannot let the guy you foul, you can't let him complete the play. Ford off to a great start here on this young season. A really good game. You know, Michigan State's first game against North Florida. They didn't miss a shot. That's 16 points. Completes the three point play. Guess what? Number one and number two are all tied up. Second team is fourth. Brady McQuaid got a talking to you, pointed it out from Tom Izzo. I mean, he really got into it about passing up an open shot. Alan, what do you want? Are you kidding me? Well, that, was, that was great offense over really good defense. I mean, that McQuaid was right there. And McQuaid's a good perimeter defender. 26 for Grace Allen. But you can say they want to screen the top of this zone more, try to turn the corner. A little more pressure on the, the bottom wing. And a foul inside going against the Spartans. So we do call that a little bit of talking football. Branching out. <laughs> UCF is undefeated, as are the Wisconsin Badgers. Every game counts, remember, in college football. They wear themselves out telling us how every game counts. Well, undefeated counts. UCF is right knocking on the door. Wisconsin is in. And look at that. That's it's going to be at the end of the season. Don't it? Auburn lost two games. In my vote, they did not get in over UCF or Wisconsin. Undefeated means something. He said, in a right-hand column, means something. We'll find out how the committee's looking at it. We well, should have asked those about the three games. And we said that they don't know what the rankings are until they release them on the air. It's not like they've already got advanced knowledge. They'll find out as we find it. I just gave them the advanced knowledge. <laughs> they know exactly what it should be. They just saw it. See, there's, there's the screen up top. The quick. Going on a bucket. Oh, man. Well, he passed up the shot, but he's going to wind up with a chance for three hours. That was opened up by that screen on the top. There was basically a ball screen up top, then they looked opposite. What a great finish by the junior from Texas. 
That's the way the movie line did better in slow mo, didn't it? They looked great. Didn't see a whole lot of contact up there. It looked like Frankovich missed him completely. First points of the night for McQuaid, who as we mentioned last year, had to deal with some injuries coming into the season as well. I didn't shoot ball, didn't score as much last year as he did as a freshman. He can be a very good shooter, he's a good defender. Whoa! And he's going to turn a free throw line. Just overpowers Duke and getting into the middle of that lane. And we're still going without Marvin back in the third if you remember this in the first half. Got poked in the eye inadvertently by one of his teammates and will not return to that. But one of the very few offensive rebounds for Michigan State in this game. Just the sixth offensive forward for the Spartans. Duke with 19 offensive rebounds. Now Marvin Bagley only played 10 minutes before he was poked in the eye. He had five offensive rebounds in those 10 minutes. The foul, by the way, Jay, was on Gary Trent Jr. It is his fourth. He will stay in the game with 11 minutes left. The Blue Devils don't have a ton of depth, or at least at this point a ton of experience depth in the backcourt. So they should go right out Gary Trent. That's not down before I can't lose the ball there. Allen with a win on this one. DeLorean the offensive rebound. Allen, left hand. Spartans ball. Langford, caught by Duval. Much more focused attack by Michigan State. The shot fakes getting Duke off balance, then driving the ball. A vast improvement in the second half in the attack of this zone. Michigan State shooting well over 50% in the second half. And how about the foul disparity? Now the Royale goes out and Carter comes back in. Nine fouls committed by the Blue Devils here in the second half to just four for Michigan State. And now Trent will sit down with four fouls as O'Connor the fresh back here. O'Connor's kind of an interesting guy for Michigan State. He can really shoot him. He's, he's a little bit thin, but he can really shoot it. He's very athletic, long arms, and a really enthusiastic, energetic player. He's going against some bigger bodies. He, he looks way off thin out there, standing next to a big Ward. He's listed at 6'6", 171. Ward ain't more for lunch than that. <laughs> we got ourselves a game. All these together side to Wendell Carter. What a second. Duvall threads the needle and runs it in with a left hand. What a move. He over pursuit because he stopped on a dime. Nice ball movement. Ward will head back to the free throw line. What a nice pass by Jackson. They're getting the ball into the middle and then looking baseline immediately. The passing has been much more crisp in the second half for the Spartans than it was in the first. Not nearly as many turnovers. Now this is a fabulous move. Just stopping on a dime and Nick Warren just over pursues a bit. You get that much mass moving toward the baseline, then you stop that quickly. It's going to keep going. Warren has three for six from the line on the night. Back to the shot to Warrior back in. And Carter and Jackson are probably about two after going back to that rebound. Can you believe those guys are just teenagers? And the two guys projected as lottery picks. You know, the ESPN 100, the top 60 incoming freshmen in the ESPN 100, the top 60 of them, 15, are playing here tonight on all these four teams. And let's get to the freshman class. Yeah. This, is, this is one shot blocking crew, and Javon Delorey tries to avoid getting a shot block, so that just makes it a little bit easier for a shot blocker to block your shot. You have to go right into the contact. And take up that space. Easy to say, but really hard to do. We, we talked about when's the last time you ever, how about when's the last time you saw the East Blue Devils have a man of their shots left in one game? Well, I was fun. Are you taking credit for most of that? Well, I got my shot button a lot. <laughs> Jackson. Looking around like he got fouled. Left it well short. And now we got a push on Jackson. Just a little bit late getting back. He has to turn to one of the officials to complain about the lack of a foul call, and he winds up committing a foul on the other end. You're right, just that little hesitation. He didn't run in a straight line. David Delorier did, just that little push in the back, and Teddy Valentine right on top of the play. Jackson to the bench, Kenny Gorn's back here. Out, quick elevation. And it's over the top of the backboard and back to Michigan State. He has taken some very good shots tonight. That one might have been a little bit of a He was quick. The way he shoots all the time. I mean, that's the thing. He can make those. And, you know, if he doesn't shoot, who else will right now? Gary Trent on the bench with four fouls. And this is not a great shooting lineup. O'Connell can shoot it, but Trey Monkey Ball is not a perimeter shooter. Lynch goes for three. 
The basket is not going to count. There's a foul going against Michigan State. Well, Schilling looked like a little, a little screen. And Trent back into the game for Duke. That's the fourth on Schilling. So he's just moving into the body of... It wasn't much there, really. That looked more like it's no contact with anybody. But Schilling back to bench with four. And Ward, who wasn't out long, walked back in. One point game. You can't have a reach like the We just passed the middle of the the second half. With Kentucky and Kansas still to come. Duke back on top to Bowen again. They took it to Grayson Allen's side. You can't leave Allen. And so that allowed you all the opportunity to turn the corner to one-on-one -on -one with his defender. Our seventh lead change of the night. The check to the back corner. And what a block. You hesitate for one second. And a play will be made against you. Wendell Parker Jr. guarded by Nick Ward. And fouled by Ward. And well, they just called him. He, he stuck his chest on in the corner just a bit. But he was in legal guarding position. That's the thing. When, when you're a big guy, when they call that on you, it is really tough to swallow. Hesitate just a bit. And that's a fantastic block. What great timing. See, he was in good legal guard. But unless they called two hands on him, I don't think that was a foul. Now, they made a call of the, the fact that he, he had two hands on him. He wasn't pushing or anything. It was incidental. But anytime you have two hands on the ball, handle, that's an automatic call. That may have been it. So Ward picks up the field. He goes back to the bench. But again, as you mentioned before, what a difference in your explanation is here. Ward goes out. Goins goes out. And they've still got Carter and Jackson on the bench. And they've got Schiller in the game. They've got Schilling on the bench. They've just got so many more big bodies than they had a year ago. Last year, if Ward and Goins went out, that was their whole front line. They were playing up in the dark. So, yeah, now they've got Jim Jackson Jr., obviously, and Ben Carter, Gavin Schilling. Now they've got some big bodies that they keep coming after you. They've been for Tillman as well. Yeah, without Kyle Lawrence, who did some good minutes last year, in an undersized role, he's out with a foot injury. And Carter is a good straighter, needs to be one right now. Jackson! Give credit to Joshua Lang for coming in from the way and helping to keep that ball alive. Has anything you've seen about lead you to believe that there's any reason these teams won't be among the best in the country? No, they're going to keep that better, but the difference is that Duke is playing with a hard back with the third. They get hit back. How could that not be a foul there? No foul, there's plenty of time back. There's a foul, it'll be on Jackson. Carter. A lot of energy on the offensive glass. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today. In the end zone, also part of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings between games. For the game two and nine, Kentucky and Kansas, we have located Bruce Davis, who is ready to take the reins and tell us what the committee is thinking right now. So here we are, number one and number two, Duke for the Michigan State. The game has gone back and forth a number of times tonight, 747 to play. Grayson Allen with a game high 26. And Duke with a one point lead, despite playing most of the night without Marvin Bagley the third. Allen with an eye injury after getting poked in the eye, inadvertently by a teammate. Wendell Carter Jr. is at the line. He's got nine points, nine rebounds on the night. And has done a great job protecting the rim. But Duke has played 2 3 zone the entire basketball game. And you would think in a 2 3 zone, you're going to give up a lot of offensive rebounds. But Duke has not done that. They've only given up eight to Michigan State, a great rebounding team. Yet Duke has 21 offensive rebounds on the other end. But who would have predicted that? That's the fifth rebound of the night for Miles Bridges. He's got nine points as well on three threes as he turns it over for the fourth time tonight. And Duval with a good scheme for another turnover for a touchdown. A bad play by Michigan State and a layup on the other end, and Trayvon Duvall is having a fabulous game. That's 15 points now to go with 8 assists and 4 steals. And Bridges, Jay, he's just having trouble being Bridges with his zone. He's going to try to go baseline, make something happen here. He needs to, when he makes a move, he needs to make a move to score. And if it's taken away from him, then he can make a pass. Well, there's never a time that I can think of that Miles Bridges should be driving the pass. A collision leaves Allen wide open, and he buries another one. And coming off that tight handoff, if you try to cut that gap, the defender fell down, Allen made a pay for it. Bridges with his fourth three of the game. And potential All-Americans here, and Allen and Bridges are trading buckets right now. So during that last break, Maria Taylor told us that Tom Izzo, and the last time I had told Miles Bridges, it's your time. 
And it looks like Bridges taking that advice to heart. Because he was not aggressive in the first half. 17 minutes in the first half, three shot attempts. That is not enough. Allen, DeLorean, two balls, air ball on the three. Michigan State to Tyler take the lead. That part is down. Looks like he just got up there. Carter down behind the play. And they're going to take a look at this. Because Ben Carter and, and Wendell Carter, Carter Jr. were standing side by side. All of a sudden, we, I looked the other way and Ben Carter was down. Have no idea what happened. Let's see if we can get a look. Behind the play. And the left arm of Wendell Carter Jr. comes up and catches Ben Carter. That's an elbow. That is an elbow. That's an elbow right to the side of the jaw, it looked like. Couldn't tell whether Carter thought Carter Jr. Duke's Carter thought he was trying to free himself or something. But that elbow definitely hit Ben Carter right in the face. And that will, the referees are looking at it right now. That looks like more than incidental contact to me. So if it's a flagrant one, it's two in the ball. If it's a flagrant two, it's two in the ball, and he's out of the game. Well, those two going at it hard. That's not, that is not going to be ruled a basketball play. No. And it's not going to be ruled incidental contact. It doesn't look like your traditional elbow. It's just sort of a flail, but that is definitely going to be a flagrant foul. The ball was live, so it won't be one of those dead ball contact technical things. It's just called all those things, flagrant one or flagrant two. What do you think? One or two? Because that's a big difference. And that's, that determines whether or not Carter stays in the game. And it was certainly unnecessary not a basketball play. I mean, it is at least a flagrant one. And right now, Teddy Valentine wants to call these two Hall of Fame coaches together and give the explanation at the same time. Lamont Simpson, meanwhile, one of the officials coming over to tell Jay what it is. The explanation is a live ball contact technical. So uh, they're not calling it flagrant. They're calling live ball contact technical. So it's more than incidental, but not enough to be flagrant. But I think it's the same thing as two and four. I guess. I, just, I don't understand this, this sort of the, the way they're they're counting this. So Carter stays in the game. He doesn't get ejected. He him with a couple of free throws and then he makes a straight ball. But even if it's even if it's point of interruption, it's still making a good ball. But so it's not it's not a, a change of possession. And that foul is the fourth on the Wendell Carter Jr. So a total of five players have four fouls right now. And you can see Carter shake it up. But, now during the delay, Carter had some work done. And that's a little bit of medical attention. He's still in the game. Actually, uh, he's breathing a little bit. Richards elevates. Down the play. Michigan State again looking for the lead. Winston turns it over. Allen out ahead of the top. And he couldn't put it out. Yeah, Michigan State got it for them. Another turnover that should have been a win. So Grayson Allen trying to catch up with the ball and make the play. But it just looked like he had his foot down and lost the ball. Michigan State popping the ball up in this thing like crazy. And it was a 15 16 turnover. 15 turnovers and getting out rebounded. And yet, a bucket here. They got the lead. And they get the lead. 17 now for Bridges. Five threes in the game. Right now, it's about getting stops and getting big defensive rebounds. Hand off to Ball. Hey, she got a nice finish around here. Oh, you let him get ahead of steam and get downhill. He is strong, long arm, big hands. He's a player. Ten ties and eight lead changes in this game. They swarm Bridges and they get the turnover. And Carter called for the foul. And now Bridges is taking the ball into so many bad spots and then popping it up. Yeah. He has had several turnovers in the second half. Couple in the first half. He's trying to be aggressive, but... He's just made too many bad decisions with the ball. He's committed five turnovers tonight, and then Carter sends the ball to the free throw line. 
So this isn't going to go down as one of Tom Izzo's turnovers for touchdowns, but it might as well be because Bridges played harder in the position to foul. That was good enough for two free throws. Fortunately for Michigan State, on the nice team foul, the ball is just coming into the 1-1. And that's the play we have to work to get open. He's a good shooter. He's also got a great shot that he keep the defense off balance. Off the corners. Five on the clock. Richards again. Goins with a great rebound. Boy, what a hustle for you by Kenny Goins. Wish you a nice one. I'll tell you what, if Max is watching, he enjoyed that one. What a fabulous pass by Captain Spencer. A lot of players do up, not that many see. Trent, no. And it's going to be important for him to continue to hit the glass. And Michigan State's got to pound the glass for the second shot. And Ward's still on the bench for Michigan State. Now, Michigan State with Jackson and Goins up for him. He's going to really turn it over. Bridges got to run with another deep pass. Bridges, not this time. The ball switches hands. Two four. The Warrior misses the fire. But deep comes down with a rebound. Man, oh, man, the Warrior's flying. Right now, Grace and Allen. They've got Bridges on the way in. And he knocks down another one. He's got 32 points. That one has been simply magnificent. There's some fun about it. McQueen will be more than that. Can't get it to go, and it's out of bounds to Michigan State. Bridges should have picked up Grayson Allen, but he was pointing at Allen as if he wanted Jared Jackson to go pick him up. Nobody had him. And you give a great player like Grayson Allen that kind of wide open shot, and he's going to knock that thing down. This is the third game for Duke. He's 16 out of 25 for three quarter range on the season, 64%. Get it on for Jackson Duke ball. And yet another rebound by Wendell Carter Jr. And another drive by Duval. And it'll go the other way. But Duval just took it too far in. He just should have pulled it back out. There's nothing there. One of the very few mistakes that he's made. One of the very few mistakes. Nick Ward back into the game here with a minute 50 to go points to the bench. Right there, what Mike Krzyzewski wanted his point guard to do was pull the ball out. You can attack or run some clock. If it's not there, run some clock. I mean, they got a two-possession lead right now. That was a big turnover. Tom Izzo is 1-10 in his career against Mike Krzyzewski. And Izzo says, very openly and honestly, it eats out. They got it down to four right now with a minute 35 to go. Where would he have to lose anybody? 